we all uh, get committed for a time and then let go and then so actually the mantra or the secret is consistency to achieve that is uh, all you need What's up guys, Derek Moore, PlaySmartDays.com. Today we're going to be talking about Herdick Roshan's body transformation and what I think went into it to complete that really impressive body transformation. So coming right off of a movie role where he was actually going out of his way even potentially to get out of shape, he also was put in a position where he had uh, three slip discs before his prep for the movie War. It says that he's got a few slip discs. My left leg is shorter. Yeah, naturally. Which is why so it is having a reaction in my spine. Apparently he's had spine issues, you know, the entirety of his life. He's been, I think he was diagnosed with scoliosis at 21 or something along those lines. And obviously trying to, you know, maximize muscle growth and fat loss with heavy resistance training is going to be severely impaired by your inability to properly perform movements in the gym and whatnot. So he had not only his body composition working against him, but he had time working against him too with an injury holding him back as well. So all, you know, everything stacked against him in this situation and he only had 60 days to do this transformation. And he started at, you know, what appears to many being a you know, sort of a skinny fat physique. But what a lot of people don't realize when they look at this transformation on the surface is he has mass on him. You can see almost a visible outline of a four pack. He has some bulk on his arms. He has some trap and delt development here. It's not like he looks completely untrained. He is somebody who's gotten shape, you know, many times in the past for many roles. And from what I could find, his physique has been fairly consistent since the beginning. So this transformation looks you know, crazy on the surface. It's uh, 60 days pretty much shredding off what appears to be, you know, 20 pounds of fat or something. But first of all, in the first picture, he is not pumped up probably. He's not in heavy downlighting. In the second picture, he just lifted. He's uh, flexing. He's sucking his stomach and flexing his abs. And he's, you know, in all the ideal conditions. So yeah, this is achievable in 60 days. But is it enhanced or not? I would refer to his genetic baseline and his progression over the years to kind of get a gauge of whether or not he's capable of supporting this kind of transformation in 60 days or not. So while his physique has fluctuated quite a bit over the years for preparation for roles, if we go all the way back to 2002 in the first role I could actually find here, we can get a reference point for what his genetic baseline is at a much younger age. So this was in 2002 and we can see in this locker room scene he does have a decent foundation of muscle on his frame he has you know some delt development here you can see the bicep vein he has some mass on his arms his biceps he has some traps here and chiseled face so obviously this is very indicative of low body fat percentage and he is fit by you know any reasonable person standards would say this is fit so this is going as far back as 18 years ago he was already in good shape not even preparing for some, you know, crazy movie as a mega action star. Now, moving forward to 2003, I don't know if he's playing a nerd exactly in this movie or not. I didn't actually watch the movie, but I assume so. And he takes off his jacket here and people are kind of flabbergasted at the amount of size he has. So I'm assuming, you know, he's meant to be a nerd or something. And then he shows off that he's actually really athletic in this basketball game and has a significant amount of muscle on him and whatnot. And Throughout the game, you see some, you know, flashes of what his body composition looks like. It's not much different than it was in the last movie. It's, you know, no more progression that I can see, really. But again, he has a good foundation here. He has some traps. He has some mass on his back. He has some delts. It looks like they oiled him up or he's just sweating a lot. But again, he looks pretty good here. He's not diced by any means. He's not shredded like his most uh, recent roles that are the most notable, but he's still fit and within striking distance, I'd say, of having a, you know, the body compositions he's known for later down the road, 10 years later. Next movie is uh, Doom 2 in 2006. So here, this is where we can actually see how lean he really is with his shirt off for once, as opposed to the 2002 and 2003 roles. And again, he pretty much has the same level of muscle on his frame, I'd say, except a bit leaner. Nothing really different. This, he's kind of maintained the same physique throughout all of them. So we can definitely see that this guy is pretty consistent in his appearances. And 
it does not seem like he has trouble achieving this kind of baseline we have here. And he has a visible six back and he's not a twig by any means. He has a bit of mass on his frame despite being lean. So this is honestly, it's within striking distance of his most recent roles that everyone assumes are, you know, geared up and moving forward to 2010. I assume this is between roles or something because here he is, um, soft. You can see the foundation of muscle, but he is soft. And I'm assuming this is probably when he was bulking up for the 2010 role. I don't know how to pronounce this Gazarish. And, um, Prior to that, in um, kites in 2010, he was diced, you know, single single digit body fat percentage or pretty close to it. Um, body composition similar to his previous roles that we've already outlined. And then he had to bulk up for this movie in the same year. So this was perhaps, you know, in between the two when he looked like this. But we can see that he has, you know, the ability to, well, anyone has the ability to overeat, obviously, but... We can see that he's in the past shrouded his physique and fat before to the point where he cuts down again shortly thereafter and still reveals the same level of muscle definition and muscle mass. So it's not like he loses his physique like most would assume when he prepped for this uh, Gazarish movie in 2010. Rather, he just packed on a significant amount of fat over top of it and you can no longer see the muscle detail. So moving forward to 2012, expectedly, he peels it off again for... Uh, what is this? An agnipath. I don't know how to say this. Agnipath. That's way off for sure. Agnipath. Whatever. We're going to go with that. So here he looks great again. This is, you know, really close to his uh, 2006 body composition, I would say. And, you know, visible abs, good delts, almost getting that 3D look in. He's got the outline of the four pack. He's still holding a bit of fat from the previous role, but, you know, this is fit and lean and pretty damn close to where he's at in his most recent roles as well. And he looks good and consistent. This is the main point uh, that you can take away from all this is he's very, very consistent. And there's not massive fluctuations in his muscle mass. Even when he gains a significant amount of fat, when he peels it off after, he's pretty much the same that he's always looked. Here you can see in the fight scene, you know, probably oiled up and, you know, flexing as he does all these movements and whatnot. The muscle detail, it's pretty similar to the past roles, like I mentioned. But it's notable nonetheless that he is capable and shown multiple times in the past that he has done giant transformations and weight fluctuations, just like he has most recently, they just got less attention because either he was a lesser known actor or no one just really evaluated them properly, I guess. But he looks great here. He lost all the fat from that 2010 role essentially. And he's, you know, close to single digits again and still holding the amount of muscle he has in his previous roles. If anything, he might be a bit bigger actually, but that's still indicative of natural progression and moving forward. Well, actually, what his prep, apparently, his high-protein diet preparing for that 2012 role comprised of 22 eggs a day, which seems excessive to me. <laughs> to be honest, he has to eat lots of chicken and consume 22 eggs every day, says his trainer. He breaks down the intake of eggs through the day, taking four in a single shot. This makes it easier for him to stick to his diet. Um, to begin with, we were working on expanding his arms. When we started out, his arms measured 16 and a half inches. We need to notch it up to 18. Frankly, I don't think this got to 18. This is maybe 16 and a half at best. Doesn't really matter though. He peeled the fat off and looked, you know, had the same foundation of muscle mass, maybe gained a few pounds of lean tissue in between his previous roles in uh, 2010 to 2012. And he's, you know, lean and pretty jacked still. One thing that is notable though, is the fact that it's not the standard chicken and broccoli and rice diet, which at least somebody has him eating eggs. Although 22 is a bit insane in my opinion moving forward to 2013 in krish 3 hopefully i'm saying that right this is one of the roles that everyone you know talks about in terms of how great he looked in his physique and honestly he looks skinnier in this role to me than he did in the 2012 movie that i just covered but he's definitely leaner so is this indicative of natural progression i would say so because it seems like his mass kind of decreases in parallel when he cuts down it's not like he holds onto all his lean tissue as he cuts down. He seems to kind of scale up and scale down in a proportional manner, like somebody who is natural. So he's, you know, pretty damn thin here, but he's shredded. He's easily, I would say, single digits or damn close to it. And probably the leanest he's been in any role to date. And it's impressive. And the amount of lean tissue on his frame is certainly indicative of natural progression in my opinion because it's not like he just held all of his mass as he dropped down. He dropped fat and potentially some muscle in parallel, it looks like. 
And here he talks about his fitness secrets with uh, Chris Gethin, who uh, I guess was his trainer for for that 2013 role. Uh, you know, he'd done uh, some training in the past, uh, and he knows his body uh, very well. So he was a very easy client, I would say, to work with. So after prepping for that movie in 2013, that's where a lot of his, uh, you know, fitness model shots were taken that people referred to for his, you know, crazy Greek god physique and whatnot. And uh, I think this is where his physique peaked and we can use as a another reference point for is this compared to his 2002 role indicative of natural progression and i do believe it is like you can certainly pack on you know he's maybe gained a few pounds of muscle and stripped off the rest of the fat it's not like there's some crazy mask in here some unrealistic time frame his roles all of his transformations are fairly reasonable when you actually consider how much muscle mass he had on in the beginning and moving forward to 2014 in bang bang he looks great again he's pretty much sustained the same body composition as he had in the 2013 role we can see here just randomly you know chopping wood like as we all do on uh what is this a deserted island or something i don't know but he's <laughs> he's sweaty and lubed up here and uh showing off the cuts and whatnot and he looks really good he's uh pretty much the same physique as the last movie like i said there's no you know enhanced progression i feel like where he's gained an unreasonable amount of size between the roles if anything he just stayed on his diet and you know continued to sustain this physique he might have gained a pound or two at most but nothing that is uh unrealistic still which should be noted but he looks really good here too then in super 30 this is the movie that served as his you know fat before picture essentially where he Pretty much let his physique go to some extent to play, uh, what is it, a mathematician. So obviously you're not supposed to be a shredded and jacked if you're a mathematician. So he uh, he looks a bit more normal here and he's wearing like big baggy math mathematician clothes like you would expect like a nerdy guy to have, I guess. And um, yeah, he gained weight for this role, but it wasn't good weight necessarily. It was just, you know, gaining fat. But again, despite the fact that he's out of shape, quote unquote, when he goes to prepare for war, again, you have to remember, he's retained that bank of myonuclei that he's gained throughout his entire life. So despite the fact that he looks, you know, out of shape, somebody who's retained this muscle mass and this body composition for the majority of his acting career, it's very easy to get back to that from with some, you know, committed diet and training principles. So again, the idea behind muscle memory is something that often goes unaccounted for in these transformations. And We've known for a long time the premise behind muscle memory and retaining myonuclei after a break from training. So basically what it is is when you stop working out, getting back to where you were is easier than it was to gain that muscle initially in the first place. And I'm sure you've probably experienced this yourself if you take a bit of time off and then you hop back on a strict regimen, like boom, you get everything back super quickly. This is muscle memory. And we've understood for a long time this premise, but we didn't know how far it actually extended. And there's new data actually that came out recently and you know a continuously emerging amount of data that suggests that a muscle can gain myonuclei and never loses it ever for the entirety of your life. And the most notable study that I wanted to refer to is skeletal muscles do not undergo apoptosis during either atrophy or programmed cell death revisiting the myonuclear domain hypothesis i've talked about this in the past and basically the new data states the discovery that myonuclei are retained indefinitely emphasizes the importance of exercise in early life during adolescence muscle growth is enhanced by hormones nutrition and a robust pool of stem cells making it an ideal period for individuals to bank myonuclei that can be drawn upon to remain active in old age so essentially what it means is that if you take advantage of high endogenous androgen levels in your youth, you can create a bank of myonuclei that you can then draw off of later in life when gaining muscle would be harder than it would otherwise be when you were 21 years old and had, you know, peaking natural endogenous testosterone production. And um, this is exactly what we're seeing in, you know, practical application with uh, Herdick. We have um, him going from pretty much, you know, lean and muscular for the entirety of his roles for 10 plus almost 15 years here. And then he, you know, goes off his regimen and he gains some fat for this mathematician role, but it doesn't mean that myonuclei ever disappears. They remain dormant and ready for him to induce hypertrophy and, and for him to shred the fat off again. So that's why he's able to rebound 
so incredibly quickly within that within that 60 day time frame. It's not like he gained, you know, 10 pounds of muscle and shredded 20 pounds of fat off. Rather, he just got back to his baseline of where it was prior, which he has shown multiple times that he's capable of sustaining pretty much roll to roll year after year without, you know, it's not like excessive up and downs to the point where you would think this guy's gaining unnatural amounts of muscle. He's pretty much a very fit looking guy without a significant amount of muscle on his frame. He's very lean, but it's not unreasonably jacked while simultaneously lean. And there's a saying that you can be big and what is it? You can be shredded and small or big and not shredded. I don't even know exactly what the saying is, but it's basically that you can't be big and lean simultaneously if you're natural. And I think Herdick is a perfect example of that because when he gets the most shredded, he's, you know, in a shirt, you can't even necessarily tell he's jacked. You just think he's, you know, a lean guy who probably, you know, works out. But when you see him shredded and with his shirt off, you know, it's a totally different story. You think, oh, he must be on gear when in reality, I just don't see it. And I think this crazy 60 day transformation can be attributed to nothing else other than commitment to diet and training and having that bank of muscle memory. And I do not think it was enhanced. I think that it is very plausible that it was achieved naturally. And he uh, achieved this transformation just based on the fact that he's had this banked up his whole life. Like he's this body composition is within striking distance for him pretty much all the time based on his past progression. So while I can understand that it's a really, you know, impressive transformation, nonetheless, it's I think it's still within reason that it was natural. And I can see the argument for it being unnatural. There's definitely, you know, an argument to be made there where he seems to have just, you know, recomped like crazy. And it's certainly possible that it was enhanced. While I was on the fence initially, I am leaning towards it being naturally achievable. Again, if you're in your 40s, your endogenous androgen production is declining, and you're pr trying to prepare for a movie role where your celebrity is trying to play some action star, you know, what's stopping you from taking gear? Why would you not? The incentive is all there, especially when you're known for your Greek godlike physique. So, you know, it's certainly very likely that he could have. I just think that in general, this transformation could have been achieved naturally. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this was naturally achievable? Do you think it was enhanced? If so, where do you think it was enhanced? Do you think he was enhanced his entire career? Or do you think it was just preparing for war where he did this crazy 60-day transformation? Love to know what you guys think in the comments down below because it really helps the algorithm. Regardless if you agree or disagree, it really helps push my content to a new audience. So I appreciate it when you guys do that. Please like, subscribe as well. Hit the notification bell. Stay updated when I post. Otherwise, you will not get notify when I post. Also, if you want to sign up for the mailing list, you'll get notified every time I publish an article with more in-depth, you know, elaborate topics relating to bodybuilding pharmacology and performance enhancing drugs. I highly recommend you sign up for those if for the mailing list if you want to get notified when those go live. You won't get notified if you do not and those articles are a lot more concise and organized than my videos and have references with table of contents, subsections, and all the clinical studies and trials linked that I delve into in my videos where you can go reference it for yourself for your own personal research. So follow me on Instagram at more plates, underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, BitChute, TikTok, etc. Apple Podcasts. Talk to you guys soon.